Today, I am going to do a series of poses that are helpful, especially when you're in the middle of your day. Uh, notice that I'm wearing something that I would very likely wear for work. It's loose, it has, it allows some freedom of movement, uh, but it's also on me and I don't want to get it too sweaty. So these poses are going to be dedicated to uh, giving yourself a moment of repose, a moment of rest and relaxation uh, with yoga, with a few yoga poses. And always our goal is to work at an 80%, 80% effort, not 100% and not 60% so it feels like you're not pushing the needle at all, but an 80% effort. And so today I, I offer that to you that just because I am wearing clothes that aren't made for yoga. I'm still showing up in my 100% presence to make an 80% effort. So let's begin. Obviously, these poses are not going to be as intense as, as they might be if I was doing a series of poses dedicated to the soldier phase or to queen phase, excuse me, to early queen or peacemaker. But these poses will still have just a little bit of a challenge involved. So we're going to begin standing and we're gonna feel the balance um, between the pads of our feet and the heels. And we're gonna push into those and an easy way to push into them is to lift the toes. And feeling that triangle with the arch of your foot being the apex, the pad at the front, the pads being the one side of the triangle of the base and then the heels being the other side. We're going to feel that it feels like we push down into that and as a result of pushing down it allows us to stand up more solidly and then we're going to notice the alignment of our body as we think our way through the legs. You can even look down. You've got your toes, you got your ankles. Are your ankles pointing, are they leaning on each other, are they leaning out? Notice that. Are they in the center of the heel? Notice your knees. Are your knees turning in towards each other? Are they splayed out? That might tell you a clue about your hip placement. You might be rotating out or in. We want our knees to point forward if possible. Some of us just have legs that are turned in or naturally turned out and there is no such thing as straight and I get that. Um, but we'd like our knees to be relaxed and pointing forwards. Our hips are settled on top of our legs, not behind, not pushed forward, and especially not curled under. Um, they are sitting on top of the legs. Our belly is relaxed. It's not sucked in right now. It's not pushed out. It's just relaxed and you're feeling the breath coming into the belly through your nose, inhale, exhale. Inhale, expand in this lower, these lower two chakras. Exhale, contract in the lower two chakras. Feel the ribs sitting on top of the hips and the belly, everything is in a line. Bring your shoulders up, 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 close to your ears. Rotate them back and down. As you do that, your hands, your el the eyes of your elbows, the eyes of your elbows are going to point out, rotate out to the long sides of your mat. Your hands are going to face palm forward as you anchor your shoulder tips into the back. And finally, we're going to complete this pose, mountain pose, with our head resting on our neck comfortably. Our chin might be tipped down just a little bit because most of us, when we think we're standing up straight, we like bring our forehead up and we arch our back and that's not actually straight. Um, so we're going to actually put our body, we're going to let our head sit on top of the rest of our body, chin pointed down slightly, eyes forward, gazing forward and to create a little bit of relaxation in that neck in case it's gotten stiff from thinking intentionally about standing up straight, we're going to actually 
do a figure eight with our nose, trace a figure eight. And now from here, let's inhale, push down, rooting to rise, bending our knees just a little bit to push down into the base of this pose and letting the arms come up overhead into prayer with a slight back bend. Exhale, fold forward. Let's do a swan dive down. So we're going to swan dive, letting our arms break over our body and our heart leads our body down, down, down to the ground, flat back, folding over your legs, bending the knees so that the upper body is supported by your thighs, feeling that in a resting way, 80%, right? Letting the head fold down forward, bringing the hands to either side of your feet, exhale. Inhale, are your knees bending over your toes? If they're not, you might separate your toes a little bit so that your feet have a little bit more surface area to lay on, to sit on, so that your knees can easily point over your toes. Exhale, we're at the bottom of the exhale, and now let's inhale and push into our shins with our hands, shoulders back, and letting our body rise up to a flat back. Exhale, fold back down, letting the hands grab the backs of the legs to help us bend a little bit closer into our body. And now let's do it all a little faster. Inhale, bending the knees, rooting to rise, hands come up overhead, reverse swan dive, hands meet over the head in prayer, slight back bend. Exhale, hands come to prayer at the heart. Inhale, letting the hands open out so that the palms face the long sides of the mat, the eyes of the elbows facing out, shoulders are pinned to the ground, to your core, towards your core, letting the head relax and coming to stillness. Inhale, arms up overhead. Slight back bend, exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rooting to rise, reverse swan dive arms. Hands meet in prayer overhead, exhale. Hands go through the center of the body, meeting at the heart in prayer. Inhale. Exhale, hands roll it up. Inhale, root to rise. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, walk your hands forward to the front of the mat and back so that you end up in plank, using that activated grip to protect your wrist. Exhale. Inhale, knees, chest, chin, crocodile. Inhaling all the way up to upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, staying on your knees, moving the butt back to your heels so that your butt is going to rest on your heels. You can bring your feet together or you can leave them apart, whatever is more comfortable. Child's pose, active child's pose. The hands are still in front of your head. Inhale here, sending breath to the lower back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, walk your right hand to the long edge of the right side of the mat and walk your left hand over to lay on top of your right hand if that's possible for you. Pinning the shoulders into the, towards the core means that your hands are gonna come a little bit closer to you. So it's not about how far you can get your hands away from you, it's about how much length you can create between your shoulder tip that is pinned, pinning, actively pinning towards your core 
and the palms of your hands on the ground, feeling that length that you're creating by allowing that tension to exist with the feeling of the arm being pulled in two directions, opposite directions at once. Inhale. Exhale. Let's take the other side. Walking the left hand across, across, across to the long left side of the yoga mat, letting the right hand come to rest on the left hand, and then backing them up so that you can pin the shoulders towards the core and create that tension between the hands that are flat on the ground and the shoulders bending towards the core and feeling that straight, that strengthening, that stretch and strengthening at the same time. My arms are shaking a little bit. Inhale. Exhale. Now let's walk the hands back to neutral so that they are on either side of, they are the shoulder tips and the hands are on the same line with each other. And now we're just going to push up into tabletop. And of course, taking an activated grip with our hands, let's look at the square we're making. Our knees and the tops of our feet our, our points of contact on the back side of our body, our hands and the activated grip that protects our wrists are the points of contact, the palms of our hands and the fingertips that are in that grip are the points of contact for the front part of our body. The eyes of the elbow are facing forward so that they have to rotate. And then what happens when we rotate? Yep, you got it. The shoulder tips <laughs> naturally pin towards the core and we have a distance between our ears and our shoulder tips that is a natural one. Wonderful. Now let's take cat cow. So let's start with an inhale as we open up the body for cow, letting that natural arch come into play, keeping those eyes of the elbow forward so that we can protect our shoulder tips, our shoulder joints. And we're going to finish cow with letting our gaze come up to the sky, maybe even letting our whole face come up to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, cat. Feeling the idea of the highest point of our body being the center of our spine, pushing against the ground so that we can keep that activity Squeezing out any last bit of air. Inhale, cat. Through the nose, sending the breath through the whole body. Exhale, cow. Inhale, cat. I'm doing the words for opposite, sorry. Inhale, cow. And now from here, I would just like you to bring the spine back to neutral. Exhale slightly. And you're going to tip the toes so that they face the front of the mat. And you're going to push into the pads of the foot, into the balls of the foot, uh, just slightly so that the knees just slightly rise off of the ground, creating just a little bit of warmth in the body. You might uh, add a little bit of tension in your abs so that you can lift your body just a little bit off the ground. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Push all the way back so that the heels come to the ground and you find yourself in downward facing dog. Inhale, pushing into those points of contact with the ground. Pushing your upper body away from your hands so that you create a, a nice, a nice line from the from your tailbone all the way down to your hands so that a ball could just slide down the line. Exhale. Inhale, bring the knees back down to the mat. Exhale. Inhale, bring the heels back 
to the mat and move back into your downward facing dog. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale the knees down to the mat. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Bringing the heels back to the mat, downward facing dog. Exhale. Inhale. I want you to walk your left foot to your right foot and let it just lean on it. And give yourself a moment to feel the stretch that happens when everything is resting on that right foot. Is the heel kissing the mat right now? Or is the heel angling towards the mat? You want to focus on getting it towards that flatness with the mat. Look at your hands. Are they keeping their active grip or are you leaning into them? Look at the eyes of your elbows. They may not be all the way forward, mine are not, but they're ang angling towards that. They're trying to get in that direction to protect your shoulder joints. Let's take the other side. Bring the left hand, foot back down to the mat. And now let's hinge everything, our entire right leg on our left leg. So I like to hook, but you could do whatever you want. You could cross your legs over like this. You could with your, you could cross your thighs over each other. You can hook the ankle, whatever you want. Breathing through this. Okay, bring the foot down. And now let's push into plank. Let's take knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. <sighs> Inhaling up to upward facing dog. Exhale back to child's pose. And now come back to you, come up to your knees. And we're going to just flip the toes so that they, the toes, the tips of the toes face the knees. And we get to stretch that joint, that, um, bottom of the foot, that tendon that runs through the center of the foot. Give that a nice stretch. Some people don't feel anything here and some people are screaming to holy heaven right now. Um, the farther forward you lean, the easier this pose is on that tendon. Um, and the goal is not to lean back to get more. Um, it's just to be at um, just be perpendicular with your mat. That's the goal. Straight back. Let's breathe here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, expanding into those lower chakras. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, bring both feet to both hands to either side of your knees and just push away from the ground. And I want you to just, we're just going to take a really quick pose here, a really quick crow. I want you to just push into your heels and I want you to look about mm, two feet in front of your hands and walk your knees up to your, walk your feet, you're up to your hands, and then you're going to raise your heels, and then all you're gonna do is just tuck one knee or both into your armpits. Keeping that gaze forward actually makes this pose easier. You're gonna tuck them into your armpits and create like a shelf with your upper arms, and you might take one foot off the ground, you might take the other foot off the ground, <coughs> You might take both feet off the ground. The emphasis is on your gaze looking forward and your body being that just kind of leaning shelf for your hands. This is where the grip is really helpful. You can point your toes if you want and you're gonna go longer if you can think about your butt rising into the sky. Exhale, let's do it one more time. I actually learned to crow from 
I was getting ready to go into a yoga class one day and this girl was just warming up and she was doing crow over and over again. And I watched and I said, oh, she said, yeah, you gotta think about your butt rising to the sky. That's the key to crow. Makes a lot of sense. You're like standing on your hands. <laughs> so let's take it one more time. One foot, one foot, both feet or both feet. This is our last round. Gaze is forward. And back. Bring the feet down to the ground and feel what it feels like to do like a very modified downward facing dog. Or you could call this an open, an open uh, forward fold. <laughs> um, bending your legs to support your upper body if you need to. But just feeling what this feels like right here. Feeling all of your extremities, your hands and your feet, going in the same direction. Feeling what it feels like to have your head under your heart. Our head is above our heart, our mind above our feelings in compassion, forgiveness, for protection. But the heart is the guide. The heart knows. And so the same way that we would not have our security guard run our life, we tell the security guard what to do, where to go, what kind of protection we need, and they help us. Our mind is actually there to serve the heart, not the other way around. Okay, let's walk our hands up our legs and let our body roll through, rolling through. Oh, let me fix this. Up, let our body roll through the spine. Roll through the spine, little by little by little. And now, let's just do a quick series of balances. Uh, we're gonna start with our favorite, well, my favorite today, <laughs> tree pose. So let's start with the tree pose on the left foot. We're going to push down into the left foot. We're going to kickstand our right, the back of our right foot against our left ankle and foot, and then we'll just walk it up. You can have your hands, um, all eyes of the elbow facing out, palms facing out. Uh, you can have your hands on your hips, or you can grow your tree when we're up there. I'm gonna start like this, and I'm gonna let my foot work its way up the leg, never balancing on the knee. So if you wanna stop here, great on the shin or above the knee. You can always use your hand to help you. And wherever you are, make sure that your supporting side is pushing to support your foot. So your foot's pushing against, your right foot is pushing to the, to the left and your left thigh is pushing to the right and that those two um, pressures together are creating a beautiful support for this pose. You can also take the foot folded under and um, point your knee towards the ground and the bottom of your left foot is going to point towards the sky. And for this you can bring your hands to prayer. You can uh, take, um, you can bring your fingers, your middle finger to your thumb or your pointer finger to your thumb, depending on how you want to feel. Feel the difference. Feel what you're getting from these different mudras. <sighs> Where, or you can grow your tree. You see my dress is caught. You can grow your tree up and over, and you can take it to eyes closed. If you want, look up at the sky. Don't, whatever you need. The safest place to look is going to be at something that's not moving directly in front of you. And now let's just bring the knee up, uh, wrapping it with both hands, bring the knee up towards the right shoulder. We're kind of doing that when we're moving pose while standing. And let it come down and let's take it on the other side kick standing the left foot against the right foot. And 
really something a lot of us like to do, especially former dancers and people who have really, really loose hips, is we want to lean into our hip. We get a false sense of freedom there, a false sense of more space, when actually what we're doing is just like, just really overstressing our, um, our ligaments in this beautiful space, this beautiful thing, this hip thing that we need. We don't want to wear these out. We want to have these for a lifetime. So we want to support them. So a way to think about it is as if you're, as if somebody was grabbing your butt and pulling it up so that you could almost go on releve. You're so actively strengthening and stretching at the same time in this ligament. A ligament can't strengthen, but uh, all the muscles that you have to use around that ligament are going to support it. Let the foot rise up to go to tree and of course you can take the um, deeper expression of tree by folding that left knee so that it points towards the ground and letting the left palm of the foot face you hands in prayer hand, growing your tree hands up feeling how it feels to have your thumb and middle finger touch, feeling how it feels to have your thumb and pointer finger touch. What are you getting from that? What do you want more of? Do it, <laughs> do it. Okay, hands come back overhead and hands move down through prayer. Unloosen that, kindly, gently support your knee so that it points towards your left shoulder tip. When removing, when removing pose while standing, it's really nice. Oh, that's another thing you can do. Whenever you are uncomfortable with your balance, you can bend your knee, and the closer you get to the ground, the more gravity you have, and the stronger your pose is going to feel. Letting the um, foot come back down. And finally, let's just get one full breath together. Inhale, rooting to rise. Hands meeting overhead. Slight back bend. Your slight might be farther than you've ever gone this whole time. And swan dive forward. And come to the ground to easy pose. Doesn't matter which foot you fold on top. Maybe you go for double and have both palms of your feet facing your face, the palms of your feet facing your face, facing the sky. Let's inhale, arms up overhead, shoulders pinned down. Oh, oh feeling that stretch and traction through those, through that area from your shoulder tip to your wrist. Feeling the traction you create when you emphasize the pinned shoulders towards the core and the wrist towards the sky. And notice my hands. I, I can't make them straight like that with my hands touching and, and feeling that emphasis. What I do instead is I'm creating length and I'm allowing just a little bit more stretch. Not straight, stretch in these, in my arms. And the hand's gonna come down through prayer. And we're gonna feel what it feels like for the earth to support us. Every point of contact that we have with the earth, the earth is contacting us as well. I imagine the earth high-fiving me every step that I take going, yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes it overwhelms me. I am not kidding. <laughs> I am not even near queen phase or priestess phase, and I am on the brink of tears just thinking about the loving, generous support that the earth offers us. And wondering how can I be of greatest service to the world and the answer that comes back is so clear tune into yourself advocate for your needs in doing so you are putting yourself and the security of the world the longevity of the world first, because we are all one. As I am, so are you. We are one. 
My channel has a ton of Course in Miracle readings because it's such a powerful text and it was really hard for me to access in the past. And what I did is I went through and read it and I read it with gender neutral language so that I can feel like I'm a part of the conversation in this book that emphasizes the oneness of us all and the oneness of us and God and that completion. And yoga reminds us that the inhale and the exhale, the in and the out, are two components of a very comprehensive wholeness. And they're actually not even separate from each other. All of it is one. We're all one. Let's complete with um, knowing that this ending is also a beginning, is also a middle, is all things. But this intentional presence that we take for ourselves right now in acknowledging Aum um, that we took in the past 20 to 30 minutes that we were on the mat that is so powerful and is going to impact our lives in ways that we cannot fathom because we'll never know life without the space that we've created in our intuitive, physical, emotional, and mental bodies. We never know what awareness we're going to hear now, what awareness we're going to receive because we have allowed a little bit more space for that whisper to reach us. It has less gook to work through and that might bring us closer to our menstrual alignment. Help us dig deeper into whatever phase we're in today. Inhale. Oh. Sat Nam Namaste. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Thank you for joining me. Have a beautiful day. Love you.